It looks like the bottom may be priced in as I woke up this morning to more green candlesticks. A fan out there said, hey Klaus, where's the stellar background? Done. And the Stellar ecosystem is maturing and expanding as some of their projects are reaching 2.0, 3.0 status. And I'm going to guarantee you in this video that you're going to hear more of the Stellar name in 2023 than you ever have before. Let's start exploring that news. Excellent sitting at 9.2, up 0.8% last 24 hours. Bitcoin and Ethereum, both are under their key marks, but they're really, really close. Everyone, ETH at 1583 and Bitcoin at 22,978. We're holding strong, getting close to that February 1st action. Genesis Capital's fall might transform crypto lending, not bury it. All right, crypto lending as a whole has just been beaten down in the United States. And in fact, the global crypto market itself has just been beaten down. You had companies out there that went under that couldn't pay their loans and then they couldn't pay those people and so forth and so forth, right? Crypto potato, we've been talking about this. The difference is though, is this is going to now change evolve and that's the theme of this channel right evolution and evolve it's going to change and evolve where the weak players are going to get flushed out and the strong ones will get even stronger and you'll see even traditional finance people jump into this space filling the gaps of customer need because yes there is a customer need not everyone out there wants to go through a traditional bank and in fact some industries out there aren't even allowed to go through traditional banks so you know how like the governments out there are trying to isolate crypto from like the traditional banking system that's the the same thing they did in the United States with the cannabis industry. Yes, we have allies in other sectors out there. So just like we saw the cannabis industry get snuffed. No, I'm not talking about porn. Ag. Come on, everyone. But just like we saw the cannabis industry get snuffed, you've seen crypto do the same thing. What happens? Well, people fill those gaps, right? Supply and demand. And there is definitely a demand for non-traditional based finance products out there. Crypto lending. Where do you think all those Bitcoin miners got their loans from crypto lenders exactly so crypto lending will not go away it's just going to evolve and get better as these weak players get flushed out BlockFi gets approval to pay staff 10 million dollar bonus holy crap i know what you're thinking you're like wait a minute Klaus, aren't they in bankruptcy the answer is yes yes they are and on the 30th of january they're having their auction to see how much people are going to spend for block by goodies pennies to the dollar but yes these companies celsius included have to give massive bonuses to keep their employees just pretend with me because i know some of you are probably pissed off and when i first read these stories i was like Yo, this is some BS because that's less money that goes to the people that are owed it, right? Here's the problem though. Whether it's BlockFi or Celsius, imagine if you were in a tech company, any company out there, and that company is like, hey, look, we're going under. You're like, well, crap, I guess I don't have a job here for a while. So what that company does is they need to stay functional, especially during bankruptcy filings. So what they do is they offer people retention bonuses to stay on X amount in three months, X amount at six, nine, and so forth, okay? They do this so that the company can actually function. When Celsius went under, the number of people that left that company was shocking. In fact, the courts for that case actually approved way more money than the 10 million you see here with BlockFi. And that was all due to the same thing. Keep the staff, keep the talent there. Now, the problem that we have is this. The longer things go, the more we know lawyers take money out of it, right? The lawyers always win. The other problem is the longer things go, you still have those expenses, keeping the lights on, paying staff, so forth, all that kind of stuff, right? Your business operational expenses. The problem though is that pool of money that started like this just gets eroded into a smaller, smaller, and smaller ball. Now what happens is that smaller and smaller ball has to get dispersed amongst all those creditors. So yes, it's important that they are paying bonuses to keep people, right, so that the whole process can keep going, but that ball of money that's supposed to go to the people that gets owed gets shrunken over time. The court filing showed that BlockFi could pay its staff 9.98 million in three installments over a 12 month period. The bankrupt firm payment was divided into two tiers. The first pays the staff 42.5% of their base salary, while the other pays them 9 percent of their base salary. Media reports have tied the number of employees to the firm to 130. All right, what else we got? Biden administration announces roadmap for reducing crypto risk. Okay, I get it. There's not much juice in here because we know that the administration has been very light when it comes to doing things positive for crypto, right? They've let the SEC kind of do what they want. They let the CFTC do what they want. Other alphabet named agencies, including state ones, because by the way, the state ones, California, they were the ones that actually 
took Nexo down out of the United States. So it's not just the feds out there. So think of those stories, right? You got BlockFi bankruptcy continuing. You've got Genesis, right, where they went under. Now all of a sudden you got a huge hole with crypto lending. Think of all that negative action. But then look at the heat map and let's zoom out for one month just to put this in perspective, all right? Basically since the beginning of the year. Think of all those stories that have gone on and yet we are rallying everyone. We're talking up 33% for E, 38% for Bitcoin. XRP, not as strong, but still good at 14.4. Let's see what our friend XLM looks like. 28.38% in the last month. So with all these stories that I've brought up, right, with things now moving to version 2.0, you can't move to version 2.0 unless 1.0 is done. And I think that's what we've seen now in crypto. We've seen version 1.0 be over with, and they're now moving on to version 2.0, a lot more sustainable. The yields won't be as high. The bad actors will be flushed out. And you're going to see that transformation happen even on the Stellar chain. Now, Danelle Dixon was out there, did a thing with Coindesk. And I want to share this with you. So let's take a listen. And then we're going to talk more about the Stellar ecosystem expanding and developing and maturing in 2023. In the blockchain and what the blockchain is really good at, which is uh, payments, and then uh, asset issuance, this, particularly the Stellar blockchain. So on the Stellar blockchain, mm -hmm. we have uh, the USDC token, which is a fiat-backed dollar, one-to-one -one backed token, um, that can be leveraged very, very well in payments. And so we created a disbursement platform, uh, which is, a, you can have, I call it a bulk uploading tool, that you can upload thousands of transactions at once to be able to make payments uh, to individuals or companies, frankly, um, anywhere. And uh, we worked with the UNHCR to the UNHCR distributes aid. Obviously, I'll let Carmen speak to that piece of it. Um, but we worked with the UNHCR so they could distribute aid, leveraging the Stellar, the, up, the bulk uploading tool, the Stellar network, the vibrant wallet, um, and also USDC. But the important piece of it is the off ramp, which is MoneyGram. So we have this pipe that is a really lots of partners participate in it. But what we're trying to do is to be able to allow the end user to receive their aid quickly. Did you catch the theme there? The pipeline that she talked about? Now, a lot of you out there watching were all upset when the whole MoneyGram thing came out because there was no price action associated with it. And remember, not every chunk of news has to deal with price action. There's not a price reflected upon it. In fact, we've seen, hey, macros mean more than anything, all right? Ask Ethereum when they did their merge. That had no effect on their price. It was macros that were ruling the roost. But what Danelle Dixon is saying is, hey, look, we had to partner up with MoneyGram first. Then once we partnered up with MoneyGram, that made this possible. Then this, then this, then this, then this. Vertical integration. Think about that. Because of Stellar and the MoneyGram rails, the UNHCR program was able to be made. They weren't able to do that program unless people could get paid out. So if Stellar didn't have that MoneyGram on and off ramp right there, the rest of those programs wouldn't work. And now they throw Vibrant Wallet in there. Again, more vertical integration. She calls it the Stellar Pipeline. That pipeline is going to continue to expand. And it all has to do with the groundwork projects that were done a while ago. Things like MoneyGram. And I know a lot of you out there are like, yeah, but Klaus, MoneyGram, it's so blah, it's so boring. No, it's not. Stellar has the ramps that no one else has in the locations that no one else has. Think of how many global MoneyGram locations that there are. Think of how many countries that MoneyGram is in. And those can all be Stellar on and off ramps, right? We just need the countries to give us the old thumbs up green light to say, hey, do it in our backyard. We're cool with that. But this is what I'm talking about. It does appear that the bottom is priced in. I mean, we're up 30 plus percent for a lot of our bigs out there. Yes, could we see some correction? Of course we can. If Jerome Powell and the Fed comes out with a 50, or if he comes out with a 25 and says, hey, if the market doesn't slow down even more when it comes to inflation, we'll drop a 50, right? We know that. We know Jerome Powell can set us back price-wise, but it really appears as if the lowest lows have been priced in. We've already hit peak inflation. We've seen now the latest set of Genesis bankruptcy proceedings haven't done crap to the market. The market's like, oh, okay, cool, Genesis, you went under. You've seen a whole bunch of other players out there get their faces rubbed in the mud, but the market is moving forward. Crypto is moving forward. It's going more to use case. It's going more to usability ramps on and off ramps. Version 2.0, right? Crypto lending, it's not dead. No, it's just reviving. It's becoming better. It's becoming stronger. Internet companies, everyone. Again, I'm going to bring this up time and time again. Internet companies. Think of how many companies failed. Do you guys remember AOL? That's how we used to access the internet, kids. Yeah, that's right for all you younger viewers out there. We didn't just go on to Internet Explorer or Chrome or anything like that. We actually had to sign in to AOL. 
Then from AOL, we then were able to access the internet. We needed a portal to get there. Now, boom, we could just hop on, type it in, and go. That's version 2, 3, 4.0 of the internet. You're seeing the same thing now with the blockchain, and you're seeing a lot more support price-wise. Now, the volume is low. I'll be honest with everyone. The volume is low, and I did a story yesterday that said there's about $5 trillion of money sitting in money market funds. We also have a bunch of venture capital money sitting on the sideline as well going, all right, look, before we deploy capital, let's make sure we're at the bottom. Guys, it looks like we're there. And it also looks like the ecosystem of crypto, especially the stellar one, is able to move forward stronger and harder and more developed than other chains out there because of their partnerships that they have. Look, I'm excited. Wait a minute, stellar background. I'm excited, and to be honest with you, I'm excited because I'm seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. Now, I, I, seriously, there's going to be some bad days coming up. We know there's going to be some news events out there that are just going to rock the markets. Crypto is still very fragile, right? We're, we're nowhere near out of the woods just yet. But we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We're seeing the responsible builders in the crypto web three space, such as the Stellar Chain, out there doing even more. Cash for crypto, crypto for cash. How awesome is that? Circumventing traditional finance methods in order to get into crypto. Think about it. All of the crypto that you deal with out there, with the exception of Stellar, all of that crypto out there, what do you need? You need banks to get involved, don't you, right? You have to somehow give them cash to then get crypto. But you need a bank to do it. With Stellar, you don't need that. You could walk into a MoneyGram and do it, making the rest of these programs possible. Showing you that vertical integration, building a pipeline, building an ecosystem, building a company structure, right? A global environment is the right way to do it. I'm super excited this year with Stellar 2023. And I bet you, you're going to see a lot more versions of Stellar products out there. Go 2.0 and 3.0 here in the near future. Exciting to see as the ecosystem matures and the ecosystem gets stronger. And that's why I'm so proud to be part of the Stellar ecosystem, bringing videos to all of you Stellar fans out there. So if there's something that you want me to cover, comment down below and I'll definitely take another look at it. Now, what I'm gonna do today is focus on hardcore training. It is Saturday. I gotta do three cardio sessions today and one lifting session. Ooh, getting ready for those Colorado 13 and 14ers. This video right here, this will get you through. I'll probably be watching YouTube while I'm doing my cardio as well, so maybe you should watch this one. Now, until more news breaks, you cool cats, have a great rest of your day.